Hi, hey friends. Grace here at the Comfy Desk with Grace. Time for some silly fun. It's Mustache Monday, which I don't, <laughs> I don't always do this. But on some Mondays, we play Mustache Monday. This is the one that came up today, and it is crazy Mustache Monday. This was the original Mustache Monday. If you've been here for a hot minute, you know what I'm talking about. If you, if you have not been here for a hot minute, you have no idea what I'm talking about and you probably think I'm a little wackadoodles. We are going to be napkin journaling, art journaling today with napkins. Um, I've got some really cool, <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. I just saw a laugh emoji come across the screen. So I know somebody thinks it's funny. This is just um, something that naturally, organically evolved here at the Comfy Nest with Grace with Mustache Monday. And I don't always remember to throw the mustache on, but today I did. I must be in an awfully silly mood because today I remembered. I'm going to grab the feed on my computer here so I can see comments. There's Cheryl. Good morning, Cheryl. Hey, Janet. Happy, happy Monday. What's going on for you guys? Are you excited for, hey, Trisha, it's Mustache Monday. Are you excited for Easter? Who's excited? Who's got some Easter baskets going? I want to know all about it. Tell me all about it. We are going to be creating in this big, big art journal that I have. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of pages in here. And they've been, like, this page was completely a play page where I was trying out some different things with a china marker. Um, this page, you guys saw me do live. I love this page so much. Maybe I should put a mustache on her. <laughs> no, it ruins her. It ruins her. She's far too pretty for a mustache. She's far too pretty. It, 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 we're just not going to do it. Hey, Lori, it's Mustache Monday, girl. It is Mustache Monday. Happy Monday, Lori. Thanks for saying so. So these are some of the pages that I've done in this book. This is where I am. I don't know. I think I had some leftover paint when I was stenciling one day, so I just threw some color down on this page. This is the page I'm going to use. Today I'm going to do a one, one page spread versus, you know, these ones that have two pages together. Um, I'm just going to do a one page spread today just because I'm tired. It, has, it can be as easy as that. We do not have to make this really hard. We do not have to make this really long, drawn out process. It can just be fun. Um, so tired, a little bit of tire crafting happening today. And by the way, uh, I have that list for all you tired mamas, all you tired grandmas out there who, especially on a holiday week when we got to do all the baking and all the food prep and all the grocery shopping and the cleaning to get the house ready, who is hosting? Uh, if you're hosting a family gathering um, or just getting your outfit ready for Sunday Mass, if you're doing the church um, services this this coming weekend, it is the most holy week here in my church at the Catholic Church that I go to. It is our most holy week, so we have Masses throughout the week celebrating Easter. And um, if you have all that going on, all that added to your regular schedule, it can be a little exhausting. But we, we should make a little time for play in our art journals or junk journals or on a, it could just be on a canvas or a wood block or whatever you want to do. But we should make some time for play. Um, that's what we're going to do today. So I'm trying to find this feed on my computer. It's not coming up. Uh, but I know that some of you are here, so I know it's working. It's just not happening to show for me. Isn't that the strangest thing? Why does it do that? Why, oh why? Um, let's see. So who's a tired mama getting ready for Easter? <laughs> Who are my tired, my tired chicks out there getting ready for Easter? And what do you have going on? And you know, the thing is, it can be tiring, but it always fills the heart, you know, to spend time with family and friends, um, to celebrate a holiday or not, like just if, you know, it's a birthday or something going on. We always enjoy spending time with family and friends, but it does kind of throw us off our schedule, right? Off of our routine. So I know that that's not always a, you know, a good thing to throw us off our routine, but it's, it's, it's good to be with family and we can get back to our routine pretty quickly. I grabbed this weekend. I've been in kind of a mode where I've been printing out some images. Oh, who knows who she is? Who she is. Uh, I just think she's she was a brilliant actress. And um, so I printed her photo because I always thought she's such a classic beauty. Um, so I was printing out some 
pictures that I found online. These are these ones are all copyright free. I don't, hers is not copyright free, I'm sure. But I came across it and I was like, oh my word, that's a stunning photo of her. So I printed it thinking maybe I would put it in an art journal somewhere. Um, I think if you are journaling on your own in private at home, um, you're really safe to use a one-off photo. Um, these copyright free ones, public domain, they're called public domain, meaning anybody in the public can use them. Uh, these are always a good way to go too, because if you end up sharing it on social media, you can't ever get blamed for stealing someone's content. Um, so anyway, I've been printing these out and I found this one and I already did the cut work. I'm going to use this today. <laughs> I'm going to use this today. It's an old vintage photo of a kid in a costume. Um, I think I actually found this looking for vintage Halloween, uh, kids in vintage Halloween costumes or vintage photos of kids in a costume. And this one came up. So I cut her out mostly. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave this base on her or cut it out completely, but I printed her out and she is going to fit. She's going to fit perfectly on here. Um, so I got to figure out what to do with this background, but I'm going to make it really easy. We're going to make this really easy. In fact, normally what I would do is prep the background and then put the photo on. If I'm using an image like here, I used an image. You know, it's okay to use images on napkins or tissue paper or greeting cards or gift bags. Cut them out and use them in your art journal as focal points. If, if, if it's an image you love and an image that just makes your heart happy, I think it's okay to grab that image and put it in your art journal. I do a lot of this kind of journaling. It's less intimidating than trying to do, like this is the cover of a Christmas catalog from the Vermont Country Store. I just loved that little jolly Santa with the deer, so I cut it off my catalog I think I actually printed it on my copier because I didn't want to ruin the original catalog cover and then put that jolly little Santa in there and did the background around it. This one, I took a workshop by Lally Mill um, and this was her workshop. So this was all original from her workshop. Anyway, you can art journal in any way that you like, but I love to use napkins in my art journaling. So that's what we're going to do today just for some fun and for some crafty, for crafty goodness. Hey, Regina, how are you, friend? Welcome, welcome. Lori is here. Kimberly's here. Yes, Gone with the Wind. It's Vivian Lee from Gone with the Wind, Kimberly. You got her. Vivian Lee, yes, Carrie. Isn't she gorgeous? Just gorgeous. I agree. Um, You guys, my ears are popping. I have to like, yeah, I can yawn. I've been doing that oxygen therapy in that hyperbaric chamber. The oxygen therapy and it kind of messes with my ears having to pop it feels like I'm up in a plane although I'm not um, anyway if you see me yawn it's likely because my ears need to pop <laughs> that's why that's why okay I'm gonna give you in the comments a link to grab my freebie it's a free PDF file a printable that you can print out um, it's a freebie I'm gonna grab it hold on girls let me just find it for you I had it a minute ago it is 10 ways that you can be creative and create when you're tired because I know what it's like to be super tired at the end of the day and want to be playing in your creative space or in your journal or with your, you know, colored pencils, but you're just not sure what to do. Um, I got, I got this for you and I want to share it in the comments if I can get it in there for you. So you can go to that link and grab that PDF file and print it out. It gives you 10 ideas over the week if you're a little stressed out because of the holiday coming and you need just a little craft therapy time. This is my list of 10 ways that I tend, ways that I tend to be creative when I'm too tired to put a whole lot of effort into creating, but I still want to have some creative fun. So there it is. It just, oh, well, good. Good, good, good. It went in there. Why it says what it does. I have no idea why it linked on there, Hildy's Farmhouse. Why did it do that? What is wrong with Facebook lately? I'm going to redo it, girls, because that did not. I think that Facebook is getting to the point. Yeah, well, I think Facebook's getting to the point where they're discouraging links all over the place. Um, so the links that we try to share, I think they're mucking them up a little bit. I, I think it's just a change. Hmm. There it is. Hopefully it went through. I don't know why it connected to another page completely. I think it's just 
the book of faces, as Chris would call it, <laughs> being all wonky. Oh, there she is. There's Chris now. Chris, are you finding this? Every time I share a link, whether it's in a, another Facebook link or not, if it's in the comments, sometimes I get like a notice saying that I can't share that here. It goes against community standards. I had that happen in my messaging to my broadcast channel and to the craft therapy club. It's just been wacky lately. This whole, this whole thing with trying to share links in Facebook has gotten really tough lately. Um, I think I am going to lose that base around her feet. I'm going to lose it. Not like I'm going to lose it. Like I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> I already did the other cutting, the other fussy cutting before we went live so that you wouldn't have to watch me fussy cut this whole thing. But let me cut her around her little, her little shoes. They actually look like little slippers, but we're going to cut that off because I don't think I want that in my journal. What's everybody up to today? Who's, who has time to create this week? Do you have time or is it just too difficult with the holiday? Now, my family, my boys, all of my boys, they're all going on a trip. They're taking a trip without me because I can't travel right now. So my family is taking a little Easter trip um, without me. I'm going to stay home and do a little creating and catch up on some work and probably sleep a whole lot. I told my kids I'll sleep in every day <laughs> because they know it's here to wake me up for anything. Uh, I think I'm going to sleep in every day when they're gone. And I, I know they'll have a lot of fun with their dad. My, my husband's taking my boys, my teenage boys on a trip. Um, that my husband doesn't get to vacation during the summer months. Um, because he, we have a landscaping and erosion control business. And so the summer months are like our go time. So he doesn't get to take a break in the summer, but he can right before they really gear up for the season, uh, this like kind of late spring time, um, he, he is able to take a little break. So he's gonna take my boys on a little trip, little weekend trip since they have a nice break from school. They have a few days off. All right. I think I'm gonna glue this down and then I'm gonna, well, first let's do a little background work. I'm gonna make this kind of go to the background. I don't know about AI. I don't think it's AI, Denise. I think it's how Facebook is changing the way they want us as users to use Facebook. I think that's what we can attribute it to. They're making some changes to the way that we are able to use the Book of Faces. All right, I don't necessarily need for this stencil work to go away completely, but if I'm gonna put a napkin down, I do need kind of a nice solid background. So I'm just gonna put a layer of neutral colored paint. I think it's called linen. I might have to take my sweater off because I'll be known to get my sweater in the paint. I've been known to get my sweater in the paint. It's, it's um, just, flowing on this page like a gem. Some pages, this is a Delusions art journal from Ranger. And it says it has 64 unlined pages of convenient in a storage envelope. It doesn't say what kind of paper it is. I'm guessing it is a mixed media paper, mixed media weight and type of paper. It has taken this paint like a champ, man. Look at how fast and easy that was. There. I needed to get that down and then I'm gonna pick a napkin to put in the background and I have one in mind. <laughs> I have one in mind from my bin. Let's see if I have enough of it on hand. Cause my bin of napkins, let's just put that aside for a second. Oh, I still have plenty of paint left on that brush. Okay, my bin of napkins, these are all my napkin scraps, like the leftovers of napkins. And I do use my keepsake journal to put them in. I haven't worked in my keepsake journal in a while. Let me grab it for you. So this is an altered book. We actually did the cover of this inside the craft therapy club at one point um, with some rice paper and a, like a lacy um, crocheted doily and some fabric. So anyway, this is the book that I put all my napkin scraps in. And this is what I call a napkin keepsake journal. And it's all those leftover scraps of napkin. You know how it is. Like you make a project with a napkin and then you have this left. <laughs> like you don't want to throw it out, 
but I want to use it somehow. A lot of times I'll use them in art journaling. We call this napkin journaling inside the Craft Therapy Club. We do one napkin journal project a month in the club and another home decor project with napkins every month inside the Craft Therapy Club. Um, but like, you know, you get a cute little napkin and you get four panels, but you've used one or two of them and you still have one or two left. I love to put them in my keepsake journal and then I'll save the extras um, to either include with orders, the extra napkin panels to include with orders for keepsake journals in my shop or to trade and swap inside the craft therapy club with the other crafty chicks. So I do end up using them somehow. Um, I was thinking I could find something polka dotted. That was my idea. So I'm just going to look through my napkin scraps and see if I have anything. Oh, this would be cute too as a background for our little dolly, our little costumed kid. Wait a minute. Hold on, girls. I got to find a home for this that isn't going to get in my way. Let me stick it over here for a minute. So I don't want to keep bumping into that. Um, I have some tissue paper. This is too fancy. I want something a little more playful. Looking for something more playful. I have polka dots somewhere, I thought. I have some stripes, but these are very much, this was from Christmas tissue paper, so it very much reminds me of Christmas, right? Like candy canes. Don't think I want to use that. Aha, this is what I was thinking. That would be really fun. This is a napkin that was in the welcome gift for spring that um, new members of the, the Craft Therapy Club got in the spring. This could be really fun. Ooh, 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 this is really cute too. Right, colorful and pretty. Let's grab these two for now. And actually this one, this is a napkin that I decoupaged onto regular paper, but that would work. I can still glue that down into my art journal and do something with that. So let's grab those two. We gotta dry this and then we're gonna glue down our little girl. Hey Lori, hey Christina, hi Rita. Thanks for being here. Welcome, welcome friends. What's happening today? Sleeping in. Tita, I need some sleep in time. Anybody else feel like you got to catch up on your sleep? What's keeping you up? What's keeping you awake? I wonder, I wonder. It's always something, right? If it's not the kids, it's the pets. If it's not the pets, it's just your own, like, you know, inability to sleep. For me, it's my bladder, my bladder condition keeping me up all night long, having to go to the bathroom. All right, this is good. We got a nice base for a napkin. I don't think I'll use the black and white, so I'm gonna put that aside. But I think since she is black and white, she's white and she's got these like big black pom-poms hanging off of her um, costume. I think something colorful on the background would be really cute. And do I wanna do a combo or just one of these? I don't know, maybe a combo of the two, because the colors match. Maybe I'll do a little floral and a little bit of polka dots. This was a gift from one of you guys, this napkin that's here. Um, I might want to do a little bit of both. We can make that work. You know, whenever I'm looking at a page or, you know, a project that I'm working at, mixed media, when you're using you know, we have an image on paper, we have a napkin on paper, we have a napkin, just a regular napkin, we've got paint. I'll probably add some things on top of that. I was thinking about using some foils or embossing powders today. There's no rules in terms of what you should put down first or what you should layer next. It, the, there's no rule. It's just kind of talk you through making decisions based on what you want to be most prominent on the page, okay? Um, if I want this in the background, it would make sense. It would make a lot of sense to just put it in the background and then put this on top. But I think I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I think I'm going to glue her down first and then work the colors in afterwards so that I have a little more control of where the napkin and the papers go. Now her hand, it looks like she's grabbing a wall or something on this side and her hand here we have her full like all of her fingers here sp sprayed out like she's put her hand against the wall it almost looks like she's at a door jam and she's got one hand wrapped around the door jam and the other one on the wall so I'm going to actually position her to the left so that her hand is in the, the the crease of the book so that looks natural that looks really natural that way 
So that's how I'm gonna glue her down. Easy, right? I can even just use a glue stick. I don't have to be super fancy about this. Um, let's see what everybody's saying in the comments. Needing to move several times during the night. Oh, oh, because of your Parkinson's, just needing to get up and move your body. Yes, I understand, Tita. I do, I do. I understand all those little ailments, all those little nuances that, especially women, like in my stage of menopause, good gravy, just the heat. <laughs> sometimes I have a hot flash, sometimes I'm cold. It's constant adjustments, it seems. Constantly adjusting things. I'm gonna glue her down with a glue stick. It's a permanent glue stick. I'm being careful to hit my edges. I can always put a top coat over her to adhere her to the page once it's all completed. Oh, her hand. I better be very careful around her little delicate fingers. Don't want to rip any of them. Okay. Now she's gluey. Now she's real gluey. Okay. Now I kind of want to position her well so that her fingers are right in that crust. Yep. Her feet are right at the bottom of the page and then just naturally wherever the rest of her body lies is where she's gonna go. She fills up a page real good. Right, she fills it up real nicely. You can see that little bit of shine, little bit of shine here and there, that's from the glue. That will dry. I'm not worried about that at all because we're gonna end up needing to put more glue down to glue down the colors. Now she actually takes up a lot of the page. There isn't a ton of room for other stuff, to be truthful. You know what? I kind of like the, f although this feels real um, playful and it like it would make a lot of sense for her as a little girl, I kind of like the florals. I kind of like, I kind of like the florals. I'm gonna take a couple of chunks of this and we're gonna put it in here. All right, so we're gonna separate and then we're gonna glue it down. She's so cute, right, Judith? I think so too. I think any vintage children photos make me excited. I think they're all so cute. There's something about them. Well, modern day children photos too, but vintage photos especially. Those kids lived in a different time. They played with different kinds of toys. They lived a different lifestyle. It just makes me excited to see those photos. Okay, this napkin has a very pretty scalloped edge. I don't know that I'm gonna keep that. Very pretty, but I don't know that I'm going to keep that. I don't think that I want that on here, unless I did it very purposefully in a panel like that, right? Unless I kept it very purposefully, which I could do. Hmm. I'm just thinking, girls, how do I want to position it? There's no right or wrong. It's just like, what do you feel like doing? I could just tear them and randomly have, but... Then again, we could make this real purposeful. Let's glue this down like that. Why? I don't know, why not? You could use your glue stick. I'm gonna grab some decoupage glue though. And then I need a brush. So I'm gonna do that. I need a little brush to add some glue. All right, I kind of like this here. So let's put it here. Because it has these decorative edges, we can kind of play off of those decorative edges and keep those, the shape of them. I think I need just a little, I missed the spot right there. Imagine that, a little more glue right there. All right, I'm gonna go over it as well. With a little bit of glue. It's a decoupage glue and varnish, so it's good as a top coat and as a glue, so under and over. We like a product that can do both, right? Okay, I think I'm gonna just do this in a couple of spots here. I think this could be very interesting. Um, let's cut this off. I can clean up the edges later. I just need to get it detached from there. Who likes to art journal? Who are my art journal fans out there? Hey, Judy, happy Monday. Judy, we started out with Mustache Monday. I know you're just coming on, girl, but I started out with a mustache. Here's the thing, Mustache Monday is fun and funny, but honestly, it's itchy. <laughs> it's itchy and I can't focus on my work. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> makes my nose itchy. I can't focus on my work, so I had to take it off. Hey, Maggie, how are you, friend? Haven't seen you in a while. Um. 
the polka dots really do go with the pom-poms, Kathy. I, you are so right about that. I don't disagree with that assessment whatsoever. All right, let's see. I'm, I'm in on it with this now. I'm going to see. I'm going to grab this other corner because I just grabbed this corner. Now I have these flat, like straight lines. I could just grab a chunk of that and stick it down here. I'm just going to do it randomly in a few spots. I don't know why, just because that's what I feel like doing. You don't have to overthink this, ladies. Um, listen, rem I'm going to remind you, you are not trying to go for like a Nobel Peace Prize or not a Nobel, a Nobel Prize, not Peace Prize, a Nobel Prize for your artwork. This isn't the, you know, we're not, we're not going to get published in a magazine likely. We're just creating for the joy of creating and for a little me time. There goes my napkin. Just, it just kind of like lightly floated down to the ground. We're just trying to create for the fun of creating. Just keep that in mind when you create because I don't want any of you to like overthink this because you'll talk yourself out of your creative time. You'll just talk yourself right out of it if you overthink it. So please don't do that to yourself. Just glue down what you feel like gluing down. Play with the colors that you feel like playing with or the markers or the pencils or the paints that you wanna play with. Don't overthink it too much. Okay, I do want another corner. Let us grab this corner here, because we have it. I'm gonna put it up in this area. So I'm gonna cut it down smaller first, just so I have less napkin to hold on to. Actually, no, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna play off that corner and just put it right there like that. This is just our second layer. Doesn't mean we're done. We're just playing with napkins and this cute little child. <laughs> This cute little kid in costume. There, we got another corner done. And I might just put one more little blob up here. Maybe not a full panel, maybe just a little blob of color. Or actually, what I could do, instead of another napkin, is put a floral up there that I can just draw myself in one of the colors that are in the, in the napkin. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's try it and see. Hey, Paula, how are you? You didn't miss a lot, Gia. We're just gluing down some things into an art journal. You did not miss a lot, my friend. I'm glad you made it. Hello, hello. I would love to know. I know, isn't that pretty, Maggie? It was a gift from one of you girls. One of you crafty chicks sent me this napkin. I don't remember who, and I apologize for that, but um, it was in my napkin, my little napkin box. I think one finger here. Yeah, I got one finger that's not stuck down. So while I'm, while I'm drying, let me glue that down completely. Oh, that mustache made me, made me itchy, girls. Hey, Tammy, how are you in Florida, my friend? I was just checking comments to see who else is here. Um, thanks, Lois, how are you? All right. Now, she's black and white. We could always use some colors on this black and white photo. We could come in with a marker and we could like put a color on her hat or on, she has that big ruffle around her neck. We could put a color on that. Like that would be really pretty in pink. <gasps> Let's see, I have like some pink markers or purple. Let me see, this one's kind of, I have these colors kind of strike me. This is kind of peachy. Let me grab a little piece of watercolor paper just to see what these colors look like. See, that is really soft and pretty color, and I could add that to her outfit. I think I don't want the purple. <laughs> um, what color is this one? This is a type of purple. It says pale plum. That sounds awfully pretty. I gotta get the right side. I want the brush side. Oh, that one's much deeper color. I don't think I want it that dark. Let's see, what other colors? I'm trying to find a color that kind of matches the napkin. This one might be, whoa, no, no ma'am. No ma'am, that one's way too bold pink. See that first one? That's the one I'm gonna go with because it's so pale. What's the name of this? This is a Stampin' Up! Right marker from, I mean, I must have had these things for 10, 13 years. I don't know, a long time. Blush. Blush Blossom. I had to say that slowly. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to paint, 
paint color in her little ruffle neck thing. This is still drying a little bit. That'll give me time to kind of come in and add some color. I feel like I need to wet this a little bit. It feels a little bit dry. I'm just gonna add some water to the tip just to get it to move a little faster. Hmm. I think my markers are drying out. Oh, good gravy. I might have to find another color like it to fill in some more. It's coloring it. It's just, um, I have to press down pretty good. I think these, these, you know, 10 year old markers are finally drying out. Okay. So I added the lightest of color. To the thing around her neck. I'll hold it up and show you. And I'm trying to make it a little darker. So I'm going over it a second time and the places where the ruffles would be to kind of give it a little more form. Ah. So see how it's much pinker than her outfit is white. So that that adds something. I'm tempted to do something with the hat, but I'm going to wait on that. I'm just going to put those aside and wait on the hat until I get a little more of the background done. So I don't work any way like that's real linear. Um, when I create with you guys this way, where it's not an organized and planned out uh, process, right? Where I'm just working in front of you. I kind of talk you through my thought process so you understand why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Sometimes it's just because I feel like it. There doesn't have to be any um, formal reason. It can just be, that's the way I want to work today. That's kind of how I want to play with my stuff today. I'm getting the excess napkin off next. That's my next order of business because I have a little extra napkin hanging out on all these parts. There. Just cleaning up the edges where the napkin went over onto the other page. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to draw in a flower here and then do some painting around the florals that are here. But I have to figure out, this is kind of dry, mostly dry. I have to figure out what, do I want to use paint? Do I want to use my paint? My acrylic paint sticks, do I want to use Stabilo, Woody's, like the, what do I want to use? Ah, what do I want to use, girls? What do I want to use? I went through this over the weekend, too, where I was like, I'm not sure what I feel like using. It is very helpful to have a little piece of watercolor paper handy because I always like to take my color stick or whatever you're using and just put it on a piece of paper so I can see what the color is going to translate on when I, when I put it down because they don't always... Like looking at it with your eye, whether it's a watercolor, a marker, um, a pen, it doesn't matter what the color medium is, the little vehicle for color, right? This little, whatever the substance is, whether it's a watercolor, an acrylic paint, a craft paint, what are the versions of paint? Chalk paint, this is paint in a stick. It, it almost always looks different here, your eyeball looking at the crayon, this is a pencil actually, versus putting it on paper. This is way too light. That's way too light. Although it's a very pretty color. I have napkins stuck to my finger. Although it's a very pretty color, it's just way too light. It's not going to show up on there at all. So I'm going to keep trying the pinks until I find a pink mm, or purple. I'm going to grab them all, all the ones that could be contenders for this. And I'm just going to start putting them down on paper. That's way too red. So I definitely don't want that one. I like those two. Ooh, and I really like that one. Okay, I think Okay, I think I'm gonna make a flower out of this and then let me find a green or a yellow. Whoa, that's vibrant. So see what I'm doing? I'm just putting the markings down here so I can see what they translate onto on paper. I'm gonna move this out of the way, this bin. so that I have more room to work. And then I think I'm gonna put a little floral here and then we're gonna use the paint sticks to color in some of the background a little bit more. And maybe it'll be with florals, I'm not sure. 
Thanks, Roxanne. Thanks for spreading, sharing. Ta she said tossing the nest. Thanks for spreading the wealth, sharing the love, sharing the blessings. I appreciate you for doing that. Um, Debbie, I found her online. I, I, I think I, I, I did mention it earlier. It was, um, I was searching for vintage children in Halloween costume. And she was one of the, one of the finds or the internet search results that came up. Okay. If you must, if you feel real strongly, like I'm not sure what I'm doing here in terms of making a flower, you can use a regular pencil. You can use a chalk pencil to kind of give yourself like a little outline for your flower that you're going to make. If that helps you to visualize like if you're too nervous to just go in with your color crayon <laughs> maybe you want to create first a little outline for yourself that you can follow along with i'm using this dry although this is a water soluble acrylic paint stick so when i wet it the 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 water will react with the paint stick and it will make the the paint move on the paper i'll show you an example I don't want to lose my spot, but let's grab this. I'm going to put a little bit of the color stick here, dry, okay? But if I took a paintbrush, or if I just wet that on, like literally on the paper, just to add some water to it, the color will react and it will move around. So you can, you can spread that color out and you can make it more opaque, more sheer, I should say, more translucent you know, as it moves around, much like a watercolor would do, but it is an acrylic paint stick. Interesting, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna go in with my acrylic paint stick and make some little, I'm gonna make a big flower, as opposed to putting more floral napkin, I'm gonna make a big flower by her head here up in the corner. Just, I'm not, girls, we're not gonna overthink this. We're just gonna make flower petals here in any form or fashion that you like that makes you happy. And then I'm gonna color it in just like a kindergartner. I made the shape and now I'm coloring my flower. Don't overthink this, don't overjudge yourself. Please don't judge yourself. Please just play and have fun in your journal. I'm gonna add some color and then I'm gonna wet it and get it to move around a little more so I can make it more vibrant. Just gonna put a big playful flower in this corner and then I might do a few more, I'm not sure. We'll see what it looks like when I'm done. I kind of want something, where are the paint sticks? I want something kind of brown or gray-ish. Yep, to go around the middle of the flower. Just to make that stand out a little more. So the, the paint, the, the sticks that I'm using, the colors that I'm using, I put them off to the right so that I don't forget that these are the ones I just used. That way, if I wanna keep it real cohesive, I'll continue to use those on the project throughout. You hear your kindergartner teacher saying, stay in the lines. You don't even have to stay in the lines, Jenny. Listen, this teacher here is gonna say, do what you want, girl. You wanna go out of the lines? Go out of the lines. <laughs> There's no rules here. We're gonna play for the sake of playing and not get too worked up about any of that. I'm trying to wet my brush, but I got some color coming out of it. I clearly didn't clean my brush real well last time I used it. So I'm cleaning out a little bit of the blue that I have coming out of it. And now I'm gonna use this brush to just move this color a little bit and make it more vibrant and make it move and look a little more fluid rather than looking like pencil marks. Can you see that? You can always add more color. Come back in, where's my stick? Here it is. With these, these are Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks, she calls them. They are an ac acrylic paint in a stick, is basically what it is. You can wet the stick itself, and then you're gonna get super vibrant. Can you see that? Like, then you're gonna get really vibrant color. If you dip the stick itself, into water, which I'm doing off here to the side, and then you move it around. Like you look at how much more dark that color is. Um, so that's another possibility with these sticks. They are really fun to play with. I'm gonna add a little more color with after wetting the stick, and then I'm gonna use my brush to kind of blend the color in a little more. Playing, we're playing. You can do this in any notebook, notepad, sketchbook. I would say if you're gonna be using wet 
color mediums, anything with water or wet glues, you would want to grab a mixed media journal or a watercolor art journal that can handle the, the wetness. You know, the thicker your paper, it's gonna take that wetness better and easier. It's gonna be easier to work with and your paper won't rip. As you know, you wet it and then you're rubbing it with this, you're rubbing it with the stick. You keep rubbing it. Oh, now I have a drippy stick because I put it right down in the water. Um, when you're rubbing your paper, it's paper pulp. So the more wet it gets and the thinner it is, the easier it's gonna shred and rip on you. So the thicker your paper is, the better. I, okay, I dropped everything. Crash, boom, bang, there it is. Dropped it on the floor. Had to pick it up again. All right, now look at how much more vibrant that flower is after I wet the stick and put it on there. I'm gonna let this dry and come back to it and add some more detail to it later. It just has to dry right now, but I wanted to blend that color a little bit more. It's hard for me to see this. I have a terrible glare on it. Now my shapes of my flowers have, has kind of disappeared as I wet the paint it makes the shape of the flower kind of disappear and it looks like just one big homogeneous <laughs> blob of pink, but we'll get that back. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll get the, the definition of all those little paint petals back in a little while. Okay, so this color turned out to be really vibrant. Let me see if I can find another pink that's not so vibrant. What is this color? I'm looking for the name of it. Ancient, what the heck is that? That doesn't tell me anything. Oh, it's kind of like a coppery gold. That's not what I want. It's very pretty, but not what I want. Oh, that's kind of a coral. I like this one a lot, this coral. Okay, I think I'll probably come in and add some coral. To add this, I think I'll just add water to my brush. And then I'm going to just touch the wet brush onto the stick to pick up the color. So it's more subtle. Instead of coming in with the stick on my paper, I'm gonna pick up the wetness on the brush and then pick up the color right off of there. And I'm just gonna add some color to the background. Some pink, it's actually very pretty. If I want more color, I could come right in with that stick because now it's wet and then blend it. Now I'm going around her. I could have done this first and then put her down on the page, but today I just decided to put her down first and then come around her with some color. I got some pink on her sleeve. She has a pink blob in her sleeve like she dipped her sleeve in pink lemonade. This is um, way more translucent than I'm liking. I kind of feel like I want more color than that even. I gotta hold it up because I can't even see it myself. No, maybe I'm gonna give it a chance. Keep working with it. Good morning, Royce. How are you, friend? What are you doing, girly? What's going on? You getting ready for Easter? I didn't see any comments about Easter. What's everybody up to? Shirley, these are called Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks. They are acrylic paint sticks. Let me see if I have the packaging. I usually keep it just to show you guys. Oh, I think I buried it somewhere the packaging. Um, they are in my Amazon store. If you go to my Amazon store, you'll find them there in the craft supplies you love. Where's my, there it is, the spray bottle. Um, go to the craft supplies you love section of my Amazon store and you'll find them there. Her link to her sticks. They're Dina Wakely media sticks. She calls them scribble sticks. I don't know. I'm feeling like I want some actual craft paint in here because this is so subtle. It's just not, it's just not doing it for me. It's more like a watercolor right now. If I wanted it more bold, I can come in with the actual stick, but then I feel like that's too bold. I want, it's like Goldilocks. Is it Goldilocks? Porridge was too cold, too hot. Now that one's just right. That's kind of how I feel right now. <laughs> it's too light, it's too dark. I want it right in the middle. I have this terrible glare that's making it hard for me to see. And I'm going right over my napkin too. I'm coming right into the napkin. The, the background of the napkin is white. So by touching it with this color, the napkin's kind of absorbing the color. So it's giving it like a pinker background. 
I want to do that right in the transition from where the napkin is to where the background is in between those two spaces. It will help to blend. I could go over the whole napkin with this color and give it a pink background, but then I feel like my, my florals might get a little bit lost that way. So I'm going to try to just blend a little bit of the color in the transition from where the napkin meets the paper rather than bringing it over the whole napkin. You could bring it over the whole napkin. It's just, what do you want? How do you want it to look? I think I'm looking at this. It looks like a watercolor background. <laughs> I don't know that that's what I wanted. I don't, I didn't have an intention here. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Sometimes when you're playing in your art journal, it's not about having a, having an objective that you must meet. It literally is just about playing with your crayons, playing with your markers, your pencils, whatever your favorite color medium is. It's playing. It's not a, an organized workshop. I don't, if you've never art journaled before, I guess that's why I'm describing this process. I would love to know in the comments, do you art journal on a regular basis? And if you do, what's your normal process for attempting a page? You have a blank page staring at you. Where do you start? There are no rules. Uh, I kind of do it differently every time I approach an, a blank art journal page. I do it a little bit differently. And what I would love for you to have is that freedom to do the same thing. Like, don't worry about it. Don't think that there's a layering rule that you have to follow um, or a, 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 a a rule on what colors to use together or what color mediums to use together. I will say that working in your art journal definitely is gonna give you a better understanding of your supplies and what they can and can't do. Like these are water reactive paint crayon. They're not crayons because they have no wax. Paint sticks, that's why she calls them scribble sticks. They are water reactive acrylic sticks. So it's acrylic paint in a stick form. Very different than using acrylic paint in a liquid form. It's very different than a watercolor paint. I would say it feels like a watercolor look that I'm getting, but you use it differently. So being in an art journal really does help you practice and get to know your supplies. So if you have a supply that you've purchased and you haven't used a lot and you're just a little intimidated by them, maybe it's, I hear a lot, alcohol inks. Like people are like, I don't know what to do. I bought alcohol inks. I saw someone using them and now I'm not sure what to do with them. An art journal is a perfect place to play. It's a perfect place to go in and just let, let loose with the supplies that you bought and just learn them. Um, I want to encourage you to feel that freedom to just play without any feeling like anybody's judging the outcome. I have a lot of art journal pages that I don't love, but it doesn't matter. I was playing with my project, my um, supplies and learning how they work and how I want to use them, how they work together. And that art journaling is very much, I feel like it can be very therapeutic. It's extremely relaxing. It's a great way to express yourself and your mood but it doesn't have to be perfect art at all, at all. It can just be playtime. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just smushing color. I'm just smushing color around the background so that it's not this plain linen paint that we started with. I might add, there's a lot of pink going on in here, so I might add some purple. Hey, imagine that. So I told you guys, I wasn't a huge purple fan until recently. Now I'm becoming a purple fan. Okay, it all has to dry before I do anything else. I also grabbed some gold. I'm feeling some gold metallic in my future. Oh, that's a fun idea, Didi. She said, put a string on a, on from her hand to the to the flower like it's a big balloon. That's a really fun idea. So these scribble sticks are water reactive. I told you that, right? So if you put a layer down. So you put a layer down and you absolutely love it and you don't want that layer to move, but you used a water reactive medium. Watercolor paints, Stabilo woodies, any kind of charcoal pencil, uh, watercolor pencils, watercolor markers, anything that's water reactive. If you put a layer down and you love it 
and you don't want it to move when you come in with another layer, it's probably a good idea. First, absolutely, you must dry it. And then it might be a good idea to put a top coat on, some kind of varnish or top coat over that or a fixative to fix down those colors so that they don't move on you when you come in with your next color. Like if I wanna blend in some purple, blending it into the pink is one technique or I might wanna layer it on top of the pink. That's a different thing entirely. Um, so like I said, understanding what your supplies do and then how to use them can really boost your confidence when, you, when you're approaching a blank page. It can really boost your confidence. We talk a lot in the Craft Therapy Club, we talk a lot about what the supplies do and if you're trying to achieve a certain result, what to do in that case. I gave you two different options here. Are you trying to blend purple in with the pink or do you want the purple, if I come in with purple now, do I want it to sit on top of the pink? You want purple, but you're looking for two different results. You might want to put a fixative in between if you don't want this purple to be moved at all, if you're trying to layer it instead of blend it. All that being said, these are the kinds of things you learn by just doing it. Just keep doing it. Keep practicing. Keep doing it. And if you really get stumped, go back to one of the groups that you belong to, one of the clubs you belong to, um, so that you can ask your questions. If you're really stumped about, like, I tried this, and this is the result I got, and that's not the result I wanted, it's really good to belong in a group where you can ask those kind of questions. Um, so find, find, a, find, you know, you're part of the Crafty Chicks community. We have the free Crafty Chicks Club that you can join. Um, it's a free craft club here on Facebook. You can share your projects. You can ask questions. You can check out other people's projects and comment on them and ooh and ah and ask questions about how they did their project. But we also have the paid membership group where I actually go through and teach techniques and practice them with you. So there are different levels, different ways you can be an active participant here. And you're all welcome to do either or both. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Thanks for sharing, my friend. I'm going to give you some... Confetti, I think. Yes, confetti comes across the screen when I do that. Ginny, you're loving this? All right, so all I did, she looks like she's kind of floating in a watercolor background. We started with the linen paint color, which is like a very soft, like very, very neutral color. And then we, I put down the napkins. Now I wanna work on the transition point that, between the napkin and the background, but I did put the scribble stick which is an acrylic paint stick form we added water to it and we just moved it around and it kind of made it look like a watercolor right if i want to obscure a little bit more this transition point between these two i think i'm going to need to move to a thicker medium which would be a paint probably um so let me i'm gonna go sneak over here i have gold paint sitting here but i don't think i want to go straight in with do I? Do I want to go straight in with gold? I want gold on here. I don't know why. I just feel like gold today. <laughs> Do you feel like, I feel like a solid gold dancer, girls? Do you ever just like feel like, I want to play with gold today? You just like the color and you want to play with it? Let me see. I'm going to put a blob of gold here. Let's just see. Do I want to come straight in with gold? I don't know. Let's try it. I'm going to grab a little stencil brush that's round and I'm going to pick up a, just a tiny bit of that color and what if I did just stipple this around the page some so I add some like gold glittery blobs on the page I could use that to obscure the napkin this napkin actually has a bit of foil on it where's my napkin Whoever gave me this napkin, it is really quite lovely. Where did it go? It flew away, it flew, flew, flew away. Whenever you have a napkin, most of the time when you buy napkins and it says it has a foil in it, the foil is only ever on the front panel. This has foil. The other three panels do not have foil. Let me show you the foil. If you look on this panel here, let me get it down to that one panel again. Can you see the metallic foil kind of glittering, right? I think that's probably what made me think I should put a little gold in this project. So to play off of the foil in that little panel of napkin, if I take a metallic gold paint 
and I start stippling it in, like making little clouds of gold in the, I could even put it in the center of my flower because my flower already has yellow in the middle, but let's use this same gold to kind of make it all cohesive. I'm gonna do a messy middle of my flower. Maybe I could just bring in the gold this way. And I may also bring in another, like I said, I might wanna bring in a little bit of purple, but let's get this gold on and see what it does. So I'm just stippling on, and it is a metallic paint. So it is gonna add a bit of a sheen, just like the foil is giving it a sheen which I love. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the edges of my napkin in places and the background, which is that scribble stick, pink. And if I like it well enough, I think I'm gonna keep doing that, which I do like it. So let's just come in and randomly add this. I'm not sure, I'm making my mind up as I go. So I'm randomly gonna add it I can always add more. I do love the look of it. So I can always add more later. So let's just add a little right now in random places. And then I have to decide if I'm gonna add another, introduce another color, which I'm saying purple, but the napkin actually has both purple and like a periwinkle blue in it. So that would be a good color to pick up and add because there's little bits of it in the napkin already or in the background. Okay, can you see the gold that I'm adding? I love that sheen that it's adding. I might have a periwinkle blue or purple. <gasps> Wouldn't that be cool that's metallic? Let me see if I have a purple or a blue. I do, I have a couple of blues. I love the Martha Stewart brand of um, acrylic and pearl paints. So I'm over here grabbing at them girls. I just dropped one under the table. I guess I don't have a purple. I have two blues. I'm looking for my paints, ladies. Okay. Talk about like just playing with your supplies. Like just grab a whole bunch of stuff and just play. I have two blues that are Martha Stewart brand. They're really too bright though. This one is amazing. That one's a glitter. I don't want glitter. This one's pearl. Yes, this is a pearl color. And it is, what is the color called? Aquarium. I think it's much too bright. I think it's much too bright. Let's try and see. I'm just gonna put a blob of it. Good. Those are paint boogers. Those little hard, crusty things that come off off of the cover you always have those right new new brush let me just grab a new little stencil brush a teeny tiny one and i'm just going to put a little tiny bit of this somewhere and see if i like it i am alive oh my word i love the sheen pearl paints i love the sheen that pearl paints and metallic paints give and i do love it i do love it i do love it we're gonna do it we're gonna do it so I'm just gonna work with the two brushes and I'm gonna blob on some metallic of both. And I don't want to totally avoid the napkin because what's gonna happen is in the rest of the background where there's not napkin, I'm gonna have metallic and gold or metallic and pearlized paints, which give a sheen. And then the napkin is just blah, other than the little foil parts. <laughs> So I probably want to hit them, the napkins, some too, but I'm going to start by doing everything else. And then I'll come into the napkin one thing at a time. I'm going to add it to the rest. And then we can come in and add it to the napkin as we see fit. So I'm just going to add little blurbs, little blobs of metallic and pearl around everything that I've got so far. It's just playtime, girls. We're not, don't overthink it. Don't over criticize yourself. Just get your paints out and play. You bought them for a reason now. Go get them, girls. Go get them and go get some playtime in. Okay. I really love the blue. I'm actually surprised how much I like it. So let's get a little more of it. I, they're like little clouds of metallic color. 
I may leave the pink too. I may leave some of that pink. The more layers, the thicker you put on this pearl paint, the more pearly it looks, the more vibrant the pearl looks. It's just pretty cool. It'll come down in here a little bit. I don't want to hit her fingers, <laughs> but I want to get some around her fingers. I need more blue in this corner. I'm just looking at the color. I'm not even looking at her. I'm looking at the color around her. I need a little bit blue, a little more blue down here. So that's what I'm gonna focus on right now. This is so crazy. It's just fun. It, there's, and it's, it's about learning how to use your supplies and playing with your supplies so that you feel real confident when you grab them the next time you grab them. Because you're real, you feel more confident knowing what they're gonna do when you grab them to use them on your project. There's nothing worse than coming into a project and being like, "Oh, I've never used these before. I don't know what they're gonna do." Well, don't go right in on your project. Grab a scrap piece of paper like I've been doing and put the color on a scrap piece of paper. Try it without water, with water, with a med like a gel medium or a liquid medium, and without. Then you'll know what it's gonna do when you go in on your project. But if you just go straight in on your project, well, of course you're not gonna feel confident because I've never tried it before. But I think in an art journal that it should be open play space, like no rules, we're just playing and we're, you know, trying our, trying our different supplies out. Okay, remember I said I have to hit the napkins a little. I'm gonna show you something. If I can, if I can, I need to make space to rest those somewhere. Let's get these paint boogers out of here. Okay. I'm going to hold it up from afar and you're going to see, you can see all the pearl, see all the pearly, pearl, pearl. We got like lots. The pearl is more vibrant than the metallic gold. Actually, it's showing more sheen than the metallic gold. Even it's, I'm telling you, Martha Stewart stuff is amazing. Um, now my napkins don't have a lot other than the one that has the foil in it. There's not a lot of shine or pearl or metallic coming from the napkins. So I think I'll just come in. Maybe what I'll do is come in with a little bit of that gold. I don't want to overwhelm the napkin, but I just want a little touch of gold. So even a smaller brush, I'm going to get even a smaller brush so I can go around my florals a little bit and add just a touch of that gold in between all the flowers. I don't want to cover up the flowers on the napkins. I just want to add a little more of that stippled gold effect like I've done everywhere else. Otherwise, it's going to look very, it's not going to make sense if the napkins haven't been touched by anything that's in the background. If they're just standing on their own, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm coming in around the florals in the napkin and adding a little bit of this gold stippling very subtle, more subtle than the blue, but it's helping everything to look a little more like it belongs together on the same page. I do like to hit my corners, so I am going to just go over my corners a little bit so they all have a little bit of gold. Got a little extra napkin there I don't need. Even if I'm going over a flower there, I'm okay with that because I want the corners to be gold. Now, I, I don't really want to touch onto my flower yet because I haven't finished it. I think I'm going to add more pink to that flower. I love the sheen. It makes me, it just makes me so happy. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit up in here. Playtime, we're just playing. This is like art, you know, the art playroom. We're just, don't, don't overthink it, just play. I'm gonna see if I have a pink with a little bit of sheen in it. I do, I know I do. Just how pink is it, girl? I also have this metallic silver. I have this pink pearl paint by Martha Stewart. Her pearls are amazing. I'm just gonna put a little bit down and grab it with a brush and add it to the top of my floral. I can use the same gold brush. I'm just gonna take the gold off. And I just wanna add a little bit. Maybe I can help it, use it to define the leaves a little bit better, or not the leaves, the petals. 
Remember we lost the definition of the petals? So I either need to come in with a pen and recreate them, or maybe I could use the paints to do that. Oh, I just love it. Nope. I'm gonna come in with a pen. I just wanna add this everywhere. <laughs> Remember I said I'm not a super blingy girl, but now I've got all this pearl and I'm so excited. It's just making me happy. So now my, my flower has that sheen on it too. It's all about the sheen. She is so dull. My little, my little clown girl, she is so dull and vintage sitting in the middle of this like cluster of all these metallics. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, I'm going to come in with a, a marker and add the details of this flower back in because we kind of lost them along the way. But that's okay. We got the color blob there. So we're in good shape there. I may just put a little tiny bit of pink. It's the softest, prettiest little pink metallic. And I'm gonna come around some of my florals on the napkin and add just the teeniest bit. Listen, you wouldn't even have to have a focal point to play with your metallic and pearl paints just to see how they kind of interact with one another and how shiny they really are. You can see that the pearls are more shiny than the, than the gold actually, even though the gold is a metallic. The pearls take, take on more light for some reason. Me, you were just thinking that about that me and bling. I'm not a huge blingy girl, but this is making me super happy. I actually might take this pink, Pearl and add it to her neck. That will be the only place, I think it's gonna be the only place on her outfit. I'm gonna come in and just add, whoa, that's it, aggressive. A little less paint, please. There we go. I'm gonna come in and just add a few streaks of this. Remember we, we uh, colored her, I don't know what they call that, that big ruffle around her neck that old fashioned clowns would have. I'm gonna add a few of the, the um, lines of the pearly paint in there. So that you can see it in her neck. That's gonna be the only place that she's gonna have it on her body or costume. I got a little bit on her little black pom-pom. Okay, hold on. Before I do anything else, I just have to look at it kind of from far away. She looks like she's in a dream world of pink colors and I love it. I feel like I need to fix right here, not fix, but add a little more gold right in here. That line where that napkin landed. Okay, that's good. And where's the pink? Oh, I've been using that same brush for both pink and gold. Let's clean it off and add a little more pink right here. I'm trying to be super subtle with the pink in the background. We started with the pink background with a scribble stick and then we added a whole lot of pearl onto it. Oh, I love it so much. It's just fun. It doesn't have to be like museum worthy. It can just be for fun, right? <laughs> Should she have a phrase somewhere on this page? What would she be thinking or saying? Um, I gotta get back to my floral here. I better just hit it with some air so I can get a marker in there and redraw in the lines of that floral. It's coming out great. Thanks, Judy, she's so fun. Oh, Pearl. Oh, that would be a great name for her. It's a perfect vintage name, right? You don't hear of many girls being named Pearl anymore. It's a really beautiful feminine name. Oh, she down here, we have absolutely no metallic. I'm gonna dry that and I'm gonna add a little bit of metallic down in here, just a little bit of the pearl so that it doesn't look so out of place. There. Okay, I'm gonna come in with just a plain black or I could use gold, but I really want it to stand out. I'm gonna re redraw the lines of that floral 
but I really want it to stand out. You could use a metallic gel pen. I use these all the time in my art journals, but I think I want it to stand out really bold, like real contrast, like the black pom-poms on her shirt or her, her um, costume. If I use a black, it should show up really well. So let me grab a black pen. Let's see, what kind do I want to use? I have these like needle drawing pens. What's nice about these is some of them are super, super fine. So if you just want a really like incredibly thin line, which is kind of what I want. I don't, I don't want it to be too overwhelmingly bold, but I do want to show the outline of this floral. So I'm going to come in. Now here's the thing. This is a felt tip marker. When I come in over this pearl paint, it's not even showing. Nope, it won't work. This is why you gotta know what kind of supplies you have. So this needle drawing, non-toxic, archival ink, waterproof, it's not showing. It's, it's showing if I hit the acrylic, the acrylic, um, if I hit the acrylic paint, it shows, but if I'm hitting the pearl paint, it's not even showing up. It won't draw on there, it won't do it. This pen is supposed to be able to draw on any surface whatsoever. So although it has a bolder pen tip, I'm going to have to use it because I can't get the other one to show. There we go. Now I'm seeing it. I can't get the other one to show. This one is showing up at least. This is why you got to know your supplies and know what they can and can't do. All right. I have this kind of come in here. I just want to redraw these floral the outline of the floral petals so that you can see where this flower starts and ends. It's gonna help it. I'm gonna draw it. I wasn't gonna go bold, but I'm gonna draw a couple of lines, messy, um, messy lines so that I can really accentuate the shape of this floor, flower. Otherwise it just looks like a big pink blob. <laughs> so we're gonna, just sketch in some lines on these florals, floral petals. And I'm gonna do a couple of them so that they're a little more bold. You really want them to show up. So I'm gonna layer, you're gonna see, I'll hold it up close so you can see there's a few markings on every petal. And I have to do something on the inside of, what do you call it, the middle of a flower. I'm just gonna add little dots like the seeds. I don't know if that's anatomically correct for a flower, but that's what I'm doing. All right, I want these to show up a little more. Be a little more be bold, flower, be bold. Okay, I just added all of those black markings to the flower. And if I hold it up really close, you can see they're really not, I wasn't concerned with being super accurate. And I added a bunch of lines throughout so that it looked really bold. And you can see several of them, but it's really relaxed, super relaxed, super loose. It's not super precise. Okay, that's a lot of supers in one sentence. Now, the other thing is, her pants are white, her shirt is white. She's kind of blending in with the background. So I'm gonna take that same pen and we're gonna outline her outfit to make her stand out a little bit more on the page. Before I do that, I don't know if I'm done with all these brushes, but I'm gonna just uh, get them to set aside a little bit so they're out of my way my book has nowhere to go with all these pencils and brushes sitting everywhere that I've been pulling out to showcase to you. All my little scribble sticks, <laughs> markers. We pulled out a lot of product today, but it's really fun to play with all the supplies that you have. Okay, we're going to outline her because she needs it. She, You know what? I'm going to use my Stabilo pencil. It's just a charcoal pencil um, because that's what I'm used to outlining my projects in. It's just really fast and you can make it the outline really bold or you can make it more subtle with a, with a Stabilo pencil, which is a charcoal pencil. I feel like the pen slips more easily 
the line of the pen where a pencil tip feels more controlled to me. I don't know why. That's just how I feel. It's probably no accuracy to it. <laughs> it's just how I feel. I'm more comfortable using a Stabilo because I've done it more often. All I'm doing is I'm outlining her outfit so that she is more grounded on this background because the background has a lot going on there and we don't want her to get lost. So this is just a black outline around her white outfit. Otherwise that white outfit is not, it's just blending right into that background. So I haven't done her hat yet. So I did all of her pants, all of her shirt. In fact, I'm gonna do this around her. I'm actually gonna do around her sleeve, like this opening of her sleeve. I did not do her hands, but her hands have a lot of black in them, actually, a lot of um, shadowing in them. But look at her outfit. I did outline her hat. I did not. So see the difference, how her sleeve shows up so much better than her hat. Her hat just blends in with the background. But because we added a black outline to her white outfit, it's really, she looks like a sticker almost on here, but she's, she's really now grounded on the, on the page. So although it feels a little scary to put a dark black out, outline around her white outfit, like imagine doing that around a wedding dress, it would feel a little intimidating to do that, I know, but it really does. I promise you when you're, when you're looking at it close up, it feels wrong to put this black against her white outfit. But when you're looking at it from far away, it really does anchor her so much better on the page. This feels so hippie to me. This big, huge flower feels so hippie to me, but it really ties in with the floral napkin around, on, like in the background. I'm tempted to almost put another flower somewhere, but there's not a whole lot of room. But I do really like that pearly pink flower up in the corner. Rather than doing four spots of napkin. I could have done floral napkin, floral napkin, floral napkin, floral napkin, but instead I just chose to put the big flower just to make it a little different and so it didn't look so organized. It's just a little more loose and free. I love the background. It's not at all what I thought I'd start with. I cannot believe how this blue pearl, it's not that one, it's this one. This blue pearl that I used is like show stopping. Like look at how that is catching the light like crazy, so much more than the metallic gold. This is the Martha Stewart pearl paints. They're amazing. They are amazing. They show up really well. Like look at it on the floral, her pearl paint on the floral. I added on top of that scribble stick, that acrylic paint. What do you think? Now, most of the time when I do an art journal page, I find a way to add some little positive phrase or a song lyric or even just a couple of words onto the page. But you don't have to do that. I don't always do that. Like this, this page has no phrase or no words on it whatsoever. Um, so although I do it a lot, my point is you don't have to do that. If you can't think of a phrase to put on there, you did all that and it's like, I am so happy with her the way she is. I'm just gonna leave it for now. It's your art journal. You can always be flipping through it and something strike you. Like this one, I never came up with something for her page either. And if something strikes me, I will put it in there at some point, but I don't worry about it. I flip the page and I work on something new to get my, my craft therapy time in and not worry about the fact that I didn't put a phrase on every single one of these pages. Um, it's an art journal. It's meant to be your play. This is like your play vacation spot <laughs> for crafting. It's not gonna go up on a wall. You could tear it out and frame it and put it up on a wall if you love it that much or gift it to somebody if you love it that much. But you have lots of pages of craft therapy time in here that you can just play with your supplies. You don't even have to have a focal point. You can just sketch out loose flowers or just blobs of paint for the sake of playing with them. I'm glad you like it. Jenna said it's super pretty. I'm glad you like it. I think she's so sweet. I do love taking images. I either buy them on Etsy from a, from a um, digital creator or 
you can go and find public domain photos, which this is a public domain photo. It's just a free photo that I found out on the internet. Looked up vintage children in Halloween costumes and this popped up and I printed it off on my printer, cut her out and put her in there. It can make a really fun focal point, um, but you don't have to have a focal point. You can just, you can just play with your colors too. Um, so art journaling, now we used a napkin in this napkin journal page. I, I like to call it napkin journaling because I traditionally use napkins in my art journal pages somewhere. And um, like I said, we do that in the craft therapy club once a month. Um, but I haven't done one here on the public page in a very long time. So I thought it was high time to come in and do some napkin journaling with you guys. You love the colors and the shimmer. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Thanks for saying so. I'm going to drop that link to the free PDF, the printable that I made for you guys. I'm going to drop the link in the comments again. So if you want to grab it, you can grab it. It is a uh, 10 ways to craft when you're tired. So 10 ways for tired crafting, things that you can do when you're too tired to do any, you feel like you're too tired to do anything, but you want to do something creative for some craft therapy time. So there is that link again. If you want to jump, jump on and grab it, go for it. Um, this book I got on Amazon, check my Amazon store. It is a delusions by Ranger is the brand name and it's called a creative journal. So in the front, it does have a little pocket here. There's, I haven't taken the cover off because you guys always ask me where I get stuff and I want you to see what the cover looks like when you purchase it. This band comes off. It's just a piece of paper that comes off. I have not taken it off, but underneath here is a you can see the flap to, that's a big huge envelope that you could store stuff in like images that you want to journal with um, or phrases that you want to journal with and then it just starts with lots of blank pages mixed media paper pages and it does have it does have this little rubber band which you can use to keep it closed so as it gets thick and chunky and you're adding things to it you can still keep it closed um all right you girls have a beautiful blessed day here are some hearts um, as my way of saying thank you for joining me here today for some art napkin journaling fun. Um, if you got some joy from this and you, you know of a friend who might enjoy the looseness of art journaling, uh, if you think that she's never seen it or maybe never seen it in the style that I did it today with the napkins, please feel free to share this out. It really helps us a lot to meet other people. In the meantime, have a beautiful week. I will be live several times this week. The schedule was posted in the telegram channel it was posted to the broadcast channel in the craft therapy club and here on the page and pinned to the top so you should be able to find that and know when to find me again live creating with you guys all right if i don't see you though happy easter happy and blessed easter i hope it's good to you <laughs>